Hey everyone, thank you for clicking on to today's video. In today's video, what are we doing, Jackson? You better be yours, that's what you're doing. <laughs> Oh. In today's video, we're giving y'all a list of baby essentials, things that we think you need. At you least for, baby. yeah, and at least for your newborn. But if not needed, uh, give you alternatives and substitutes. Yeah, so um, we're just going to jump right into the list. We're going to do 10 items. I'll do five, Justin will do five, and we'll do every other. So if you guys are interested in watching that, then continue watching. Just to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you. to say and this is not in any particular order this is just some items so don't like think like one is ranked higher than the other say my mica mickey bassinet and it's a certain kind of bassinet that connects to your bed and i like it because of the size of it i think bassinets are essential but i do think the size of it makes a difference because um other things in the market like the halo bassinet they, they don't get so big and I feel like when you're sleep training and when you have your baby in your room at least for what the CDC recommends which is up to one a year you Not need some yes you need something that is going to be big and grows with your baby and I had eight pounders so as cute as those halo bassinets are my babies get really big um, and it wouldn't have a lot of use for us over a long period of time. I do believe Noble stayed in his Micah Mickey bassinet until he was about one. Um, we sleep trained him in it and everything. So I definitely recommend it. Again, it has the ability to connect to our bed so it can be by my bedside or it can be on its own in the room, which I really like. And I just think it's an essential for breastfeeding, for babies, for everything. Would you agree? Yeah, I think it's cool. All right, next is a uh, travel system. Uh, I don't know the name of our travel system. I wish I did, but. Uh, we have the Evenflow uh, modular pivot travel system. Yeah, this travel system is good because it's better than having to take your baby out of the car seat and put them over your, however you're gonna hold the baby and put it into a new stroller or Something the travel system is like a stroller and a car seat combined and it has like the little base of the car seat so you can hook it to your car but then you press the button to pull the car seat out and you put it inside of a, a stroller and then it just keeps going instead of having to have a whole separate stroller which takes up a lot of space and then having a car seat and having to buy a whole separate base and also with this you can uh, adjust the one we have you can adjust the level to how high you want the baby you can have the baby facing you you can have the baby facing the other way and it's all pretty simple and it folds so because it folds it's easy and it's more compact and you can like load it in the back of your car if you don't drive a big car it's easier to fit and you can even fit it in your back seat if you want to fit it in your back seat but yeah i think also multiple kids so if you have a toddler and a, a baby then you can use um the seat that it comes with or you could just i mean there's so many configurations yeah, it came with like a little second seat whereas for like bigger kids or you could just use it the same one for your your baby when the baby grows and just instead of the car seat and just replace your car seat over time um, which is going to save you a lot of money so you don't have to buy all these different things i definitely think it's an essential as well i would say the noise machine we have a noise machine um it's called the hatch it has an app on your phone where you can control so many different things about the noise machine from your phone um they have i believe the rest plus and the normal one um 
I always get the Rest Plus, which is the most expensive one. You don't have to get that one. But I like it because that one, it can work when power goes out for a little bit of time. Yeah, it charges for like, I think it once on a full charge, can go 24 hours without. Yeah. 24 hours plus. It's really great. And then on top of that, um, you can see the time on it. And I feel like a lot of the time you don't know what time it is. You don't know what's going on. And you can just look at it and it's like a time is, is on there. And I just love it because I know a lot of people who get noise machines or at least the hatch, they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to use it. And it's really essential for sleep regulation. Um, getting your baby to sleep and also getting your baby to relax. Um, I, we didn't bring it to the hospital, but having a noise solution in the hospital that gets very, very loud is an essential. Your baby will love to hear the noise of it and it helps them to stop crying to hear that noise. Um, a lot of people are kind of weird about white noise as well because they feel like, I guess they feel like, what, what is that noise about? Like, why would the baby like it? And it's because when the baby's in your womb, they hear all the noises of your body functioning. So when they come out here and there's no noise, it's kind of unsettling for them. So when they hear that noise, it kind of calms them down and soothes them. So when they're a little baby, it can be very calming and soothing and help them with sleep. Then moving on from there, when they become a toddler and they're sleep trained, maybe around that four month mark, it's going to be good to help them to associate this, the noise with going to sleep. And currently we have our white noise machine running right now. You might be able to hear it, but it's we have a two year old and we still use the noise machine so he can get a restful sleep. In addition to all these pros about the white noise machine, it's also great for if you have a noisy household and it blocks out the noise so that they're not easily woken up from hearing different things going on in the house outside of their room or anything like that. So there's so many pros to the white noise machine. There's awesome. so many different ones out there. You don't have to do the hatch, but that is my favorite. I do feel as though that one gets super, super loud. That's what, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, <laughs> that one gets super, super loud and it's thorough. You can use it on your phone. You know it's going to work. It's one of those things that's like worth the money because you know it's going to come correct. Kind of a thing. It's also not just white noise, it has a whole bunch of different sounds to it. Oh, yeah. It can change colors, the, the how bright you want. It's like a night light as well, so it can change how, how bright you want the night light, what color you want it to be, and it's like a whole bunch of colors, yeah. a whole bunch of sounds. Yeah, there's that's definitely a good point. And you can change the color you want, you can uh, do the different sounds. So I know a lot of people, their babies don't know the difference between the night and the day, and it helps to regulate that for them. We have birds chirp in the morning for Noble, so he can kind of know, okay, well, it's the morning time, it's time to wake up versus a nap. Um, certain things like that about it, and I would say that it's very, very great for those things as well. So that would be definitely essential, and remember, if you get the hatch machine, it works best if you turn the volume all the way up for the white noise, not midway, not to the end, all of the way up. So. A tummy time mat. I think tummy time is very important because it helps your baby develop stronger neck muscles, stops them from getting a flat back of the head because it's laying down on the back of his melon all day. Mm -hmm. and, you know, baby skulls aren't fully formed yet, so they're very malleable. They can just squish and get flat in the back, and you know, I think that causes problems. I think is it. Yeah, they would have to wear like a helmet. Yeah, what she said. And also, uh, tummy time mat can also bring toys and stimulate your child and keep your child occupied, whether it's laying on his back or laying on his stomach and has toys that are surrounding him. Well, him or her, but we got him. Yeah, we got him. And also, uh, yeah, it's, and if you don't have money for a tummy time mat, which is, it's essential, but you don't exactly need a mat. You can use a blanket, you can use a towel, you can use, I don't know, Anything you have, really. Anything you have that's not going to harm the baby or the, the baby pushes her, his or her face on it, it will still be able to breathe. Anything. Yeah. It's really good. Um, and I think it's an essential because especially when the baby stops being like a little infant that sleeps all the time, but it's not quite at that level where it can hold its head up on its own and do all this extra stuff that toddlers can do. 
that in between stage is, is really good for tummy time because it's going to give your child the opportunity to do do things that they can do within their skill. I'll do the receiving blanket. So with our first kid, we had a bunch of receiving blankets and we just didn't know what to do with them. They're too short to use as a swaddle and they're like too thin to think it's going to be a blanket on him or something like that. Um, and he was born in the winter, so it definitely wouldn't work as a blanket on him. Not at all. Um, so I, they just kind of collected and sat in the corner, really, in the windowsill, remember? Um, and now with this baby, I got it in my mind that I could use it as a burp cloth, especially when you fold them. Um, a lot of the time, people feel like they need something a little thicker, but for us, they work very, very well as burp cloths. Um, to be able to just wipe up, spit up really quick and that kind of a thing. Um, you don't have to have them go to waste and they don't have to just sit on the side. They definitely can be used. And I'm saying this because a lot of people get them at baby showers and different things like that. And they come with things and then you just don't know what to do with these extra blanket. Well, you can use them for spit up and accidents or things to clean up really quick. And I think they work really, really well for us and they're pretty cheap. So I use the receiving blankets as burp cloths. Next on my list is a baby rocker or like bouncer or whatever you want to call it. And I'll have Serena put a picture in there because I don't really know how to describe it. But it's like a little, like a little lounging chair for the babies and the baby, you just use your foot and you can rock it. The one we have, it vibrates and it plays little, little songs. And then, I don't know, it's pretty cool. Atlas likes it a lot, but the battery's been dead for a while, and we just mm -hmm. are too lazy to change the battery, so we don't use the vibrate anymore. We just pretty much just rock him. But the vibration was really good when we had it. It put him to sleep right away. Yeah, like right now, he's right in front of me, but you can't see him, but he's sleeping because he's in that little rocker. And if he ever gets fussy, you just rock it a little bit with your foot or your hand or whatever you want to, uh, whatever floats your boat. And he gets a little less grumpy and goes back to sleep. Yeah. Or that rocker, bro. Yeah, it's pretty good. I definitely like it. I think it would be better to have one that, well, I think, I don't know. I think it's cool to be able to adjust the rocking to how you want it. That's the best part of, about it being manual and not rocking on its own. Um, we tried the Mamaru for him. He was not a fan. We just wound up selling that. Um, he just did not like it. I'm not sure why. Some babies like it, some babies don't. But the rocker has been tried and true for both. Atlas and Noble, they both enjoyed their rocker. Um, Too much. Yeah, honestly, I think we got a little bit of PTSD from the damn rocker. When they're not in it, I find myself... Rocking. <laughs> I find myself yeah. rocking nothing because I'm so used to rocking it. But it definitely... But that's just crazy, that, That'll tell you how much we use it. Yeah, she'll, she'll, uh, she'll sit there and be eating or half asleep and be like... Rocking oh. the thing. I like Serena. There's no baby in there. I got the baby. <laughs> she like, oh, I, I don't know. Or I'll be holding him and I'll freaking be rocking that thing. It's just a problem, but it definitely works well um, to be able to put put the baby down for for a little bit and go and do some other things you have it's to do. That's definitely very helpful. Yeah, for sure. I I remember with Noble when I discovered that it actually worked for that. I it was like a revelation. And then the little kid, he was crazy. He was would crazy. not let me put him down. And then I finally put him down and was able to pee. It was great. Uh, my pacifier. Um, for us, pacifiers are good in this household. I know a lot of people don't like pacifiers. They're controversial. We like pacifiers. Um, they're, first of all, if you don't use a pacifier, your baby will use you as a pacifier. And maybe some people don't mind that. But I mind that because that means that you're being used 24-7. Um, and that can be tiring for anyone. Um, in addition to that, it helps prevent SIDS because I think it has something to do with the breathing and them using the pacifier. It's like them using it something and always moving. So it kind of like... Opens it up. Yeah, opens up their airway or something like that. But I don't know the science, but it prevents SIDS. Um, and it's just really good for, no, and known for soothing a baby. And it can help when the baby is fussy and just not 
doing well. Um, if you don't want to use a pacifier all the time, you don't have to. You could just use it, you know, uh, for emergencies or, you know, when you're in that kind of position where you need one. But I just, I like the pacifier and I think the ones that we use are really good. We use the Advent ones. The, that's the ones that they had in the hospital. Um, both that's the our, only ones they really like. Yeah, both of my boys, that's what they were into. We have other options, but yeah, they just spit them out. Everything is... Yeah, they don't. They they mostly like just the Advent ones at the hospital, and they're actually pretty cheap. You can get like a two pack for really cheap. So I would say that that's a good one for us. Last one is water wipes. Okay, so water wipes I think is really good because it's no chemicals in it. It's it's like ninety nine point nine percent water and a little drop of fruit extract. You know, just to keep it, I guess, fresh. We're but. Not I wish, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I used it because Atlas, when we first had him and he was getting his diaper changed so frequently, he developed like a, a little rash from like excessive wiping because we would wipe him all the time. And you know, he's a little newborn, so he'd pee and poo his diaper every five seconds. But uh, yeah. with the water wipes, we didn't have to worry about no chemicals or anything. It's just like wetting a napkin and wiping it on him and making sure it's like. He's clean and everything and you know also when it comes to like Noble like if we're gonna take the route we did with Noble we don't give Noble a bath every day because it's unnecessary if he hasn't been outside or hasn't ran around or did anything like to make him dirty but we wipe him down with the water wipes because we know it's like safe for him it's not no, nothing excessive nothing extra and we can clean his face with it without worrying about him having to taste chemicals and all that and I just think water wipes are like pretty good yeah, I like them too. I think they're really good because what you were saying, no chemicals, and they just, you hit the nail on the head. I feel like they just do what we need them to do. They're really good um, for sensitive new baby butts and just babies in general. Um, they get super, super moist. So a lot of these wipes, this stuff might not even seem like it matters, but it does. They're the probably the most moist, wet wipe that I have encountered from the wipes that we've used. Um, and that's important sometimes when you have a mess and when you have, you just want something that's gonna work. And yeah. that's one of those things. It's expensive. It's more of an expensive wipe, but it's worth it. Yeah. Cause it works just like the white noise machine. I have a one more essential and then we are going to be done. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna tell you guys what that essential is. Um, so, hmm, okay. The last essential I'll say is coconut oil. That's something that is overlooked and you might forget, um, but it works really well. Uh, first of all, for moisturizing your baby. I know you're not supposed to put a bunch of lotions and things on the baby, but once you can, coconut oil is a good uh, thing to start using because it's natural and it just, it gets the job done. Um, you can put it for cradle cap. So if your baby is struggling with cradle cap, which is the dry flakes, you can put some of the coconut oil on their scalp and then just comb it through, uh, the flakes through. And that works really, really well. You can put it on their face if they have marks or scratches or you can just use it to moisturize them. And I think that it's something that um, it's definitely overlooked, even with your toddler if you have a toddler, um, it's good to add into their hair if their hair gets dry. And yeah, I just think that overall, um, coconut oil is quick, really good. Quick side note, am I sleeping? I'm actually just looking down at Atlas, so you can't really like see my eyes. Coconut oil is really great. It is pretty natural. The one that we use, it um, we get it in a big tub from Target and it's the virgin one. Um, you want to get one that's natural and doesn't have additives or anything in it. Um, it can be used for cooking, but we use it on our babies. <laughs> so, yeah, I would say that that's definitely a good one. How do you feel about the coconut oil? I think it's great. I mean, it makes, uh, makes you less ashy. <laughs> yeah. It makes you a less ashy. Uh, when he was a small baby, we used to give him little comb overs with it and like put it in his hair and moisturize his scalp and he would get these cute little comb over look like a little Vietnamese waiter. <laughs> anyway, 
We can say stuff like that too because Justin is Asian and I'm Asian, so. Asian people are allowed to make fun of other Asian people. You don't Remember go that. saying that. Remember <laughs> that. We might, people always say this, oh, all Asian people hate other Asian people. No, we don't. We secretly love each other. It's just, we just like to be critical on each other. Asian people love Asian people. Yes. And, and, and she's Chinese. <laughs> Shut up, leave me alone. Now, anyway, um, going back to what we were saying, um, those are some of the essential items. And I think that they've made uh, us parenting a lot easier. Very easy. um, There's one more thing that I would like to mention that we did not mention. What's that, girl? And dealing with the diaper rash this time, Ooh. Aquaphor, the Aquaphor ointment one was really good we have usually we use like diaper rash creams and stuff and we yeah, have one green, we use regularly the green, the green one which i have right here actually but if your baby has an extreme that's really good for preventative care so like if you put that on every time you change the baby it's going to be really good to just prevent the diaper rash from coming that's how i like to do it justin is a bit lazy and he does not like to put diaper rash cream on every time. But I do think it's important to prevent. I think preventative care is important. But that being said, you want to pick, if you're going to do something like that, then you want to pick something natural and not something like um, Destin or something like that. Because that has That's chemicals. True. Yeah, that has chemicals in it. And so you don't want to put those on your baby if your baby is not experiencing a rash. So that's good for preventative care. Aquaphor has been amazing for when he has a full-blown rash okay yeah because you can use it for other things as well like if you do decide if you want to circumcise your child or whatever route you want to go with that yeah it's a substitute for gasoline or any petroleum jelly yeah it's really good and just and diaper rash with that thing is amazing the diaper rash will go away within like a day or two um so we love it anyway thank you for watching today's video we hope that some of these suggestions are able to help you guys out. Um, congratulations if you're watching this as a new parent. Or um, a soon-to-be parent. Or a soon-to-be parent. Also, um, if you're just watching this to get an idea of what to get at like a baby shower or on a registry, then that's really great as well. And congratulations to your friend or family member. Um, Before you go, we're going to... Uh... We're going to leave like a list of the stuff we described in the description. So if you want to go look it up yourself, because we're just going to type it in there. Yeah. Yeah. Check that out. But yeah. Uh, thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Bye. We're going to five. Oh. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was corny. But... You missed. Okay. <laughs> you got to believe.